Mesa Badlander 25, Mesa 110 extension cabinet. The 212 is not in the video right now. Well, it's in the video, but it's not in the sound. Mini Rec 25 behind me. We're going to switch between these two amps. I have the Tube Screamer TS9 modified here. It's off right now, but it's in the circuit. Going to play just a couple quick riffs through the 110. Kick the Tube Screamer on. 110. Turn this amp off. Turn that amp on. Tube Screamer out of it. Tube Screamer in it. Pretty simple. The 110 cab here, it's made by Mesa. I don't know what the hell they charge for them right now. Uh, I know they probably charge more than I paid because I bought this, uh, I think, two years ago or whenever this dropped. Uh, what's the... Does have a date on it? This one is serial number... C196963. I don't have a date on that, so sorry. But it's new. You can see condition here. I've used it at a couple of shows where I was doing fill-in work, put a microphone in front of it. I was playing a Strat and some funk music and um, some classic rock with the mini rectifier at the time. And the Badlander 100 actually threw it, but lower volume. So here we go. 110. Mini Badland, not Mini Badlander, Badlander 25, Tube Screamer. <laughs> channel with the tube screamer on. <laughs> See what happens. There we go, that's where it should be. So we're gonna go back to the dirty and do some tube screamer again. We're going to switch to the mini. And as I told you before, do not plug your mini in or throw your speaker cables on the ground. But don't plug your mini in and turn it on without a load. Help if I would have brought a longer cable, huh? Instead of uh, using a little six inch patcher here. So we're on the dirty channel mini rectifier and we're about mm, 8 39 o'clock on the volume. Maybe. Has to warm up. There we go. Tube screamer on. 
So for reference, I had to look where the game was on this. The game's only at about 1 o'clock on the mini. I'm going to turn it up to about 3 o'clock. Let's see where that is. So the tube screamer's off. <laughs> But just because we can, we're going to go back into our mini here. So where's our other cable at? When I say mini, I mean the Badlander 25. And this is what we're going to close out with. So let's see if I can do this without knocking anything over. And then we go over here with this. So initially, when I started the video, if I can push this in here, um, when I started the video, I didn't think that the Mini had that much more gain. And I want to be careful when I say that because it almost makes it sound like you don't have enough gain. So I did not say you do not have enough gain. I'm saying that you have more apparent gain with that. So here we are. <laughs> going to dime the gain on the Badlander 25. <laughs> typically don't when I run these and it's just because I run a couple boosts on the, the board uh, grid slammer Prince of Tone and an emotional support SD1 doesn't matter if it's on it's on the board for support everyone should have an emotional support SD1 so that's where we are with these I would say that the Badlander 25 is more forward mid like low mid mid and high mid focused than the Mini is. The Mini seems like it gets tubby pretty quickly. The Mini rectifier has more gain, uh, no doubt about it. Volume wise, they're similar. It seems like the Mini might be louder when you're looking at the knob where it would be, but usable volume, they're both belligerent when it comes to how loud. Um, 
I think that the volume on both of these amplifiers, it just doesn't get louder past a certain point. So there you have it. Those are the two amplifiers. They price wise, I guess. Okay. So th this does deserve a bit of a conversation. Price-wise, both amplifiers are very similar. I think a mini rectifier right now is $1,550, and this guy here is $1,599. So you're in the same price ballpark. I didn't buy a mini rectifier to fill the role that I bought the Badlander for. I bought the Badlander because I have the 100, and I like the 100 a lot, and I thought a 25 would be a really cool option you know, putting a 100 watt head on your desk, it takes up a lot of real estate. So is this, but not as much. I bought the mini rectifier because I wanted a light amp that I could throw on one shoulder with the gig bag. I could throw one of these cabinets or the Mesa Thiel cabinet. In the other hand, I could have a gig bag on my back that has a guitar in it and another gig bag. And I can go to a show in one trip. Um, it's That's what I was doing when I was filling with the one group. I was taking uh, two strats with me and you know, I have cases for them, but if we were playing a place that didn't have smoking, I took gig bags. I handle my own stuff so I don't have to worry about them getting thrown around. I took either this or a Thiel. And I took that and I could get my whole rig in in one shot. Um, my little gear bag, I took a different pedal board with it and everything just went in one trip. It was super convenient. Whereas when I go to a show with the big one, I'm taking the amp in a road case. I'm taking a four by 12 cabinet. I'm taking a road case for my pedal board taking three, four guitars with me, all in hard cases, I'm taking a rack case for all my guitars. It's just a pain in the ass. You take multiple trips. You're wondering, did someone knock something over when you're you know, in the club? And I'm sorry, when you're walking back to the club from the vehicle, you have to worry about your multiple trips back and forth to the car. Did someone see you take your amp out first and then throw a brick through your window when you're on your way to get your guitars? Um, or did they see you take the guitars out first kind of thing? So I bought the mini rectifier for convenience of just drag drop for filling gigs. I don't need my full tone that I would normally look to get in the one band I was playing in because we covered everything from Paul Abdul to Pantera. So you need high gain and then ultra clean. Um, with the one fill-in group, I could do a lot of their material with a simple overdrive, of course, and a delay. So anyway, that's a little backstory. I don't they're meant for the same audience. They're meant at the same price point, but I think they do different things. The Badlander 25, to me, is a great band, small gig, and home recording amp, even though I haven't recorded it with the, the direct out. I know the direct out sounds good. The mini rectifier is convenient because, oh, and the other reason I liked it, it was a simple backup amp to my Badlander 100, it uses the same foot switch. And so on my pedal board, I didn't have to change anything. I could just take my 100 in. If anything would happen to it, I could just power on the mini rectifier. I never had to do that. Uh, the Badlander has been rock solid, but that's one of the reasons I like it too. Same foot switch, simple layout, takes up no real estate, can come in on my shoulder with my other shit. And it was a tactical decision. And I also bought mine before they went insane in price. So that's a little backstory on that. A couple sounds through the uh, 110 cab, Badlander 25, mini rectifier, and because, you know, I can't not do it. <laughs>